that's the snippet in the bud right now. You're definitely not going to retire from tennis. Got nothing to prove to anyone else. You know, um, I've, I think I've had a pretty good career. Early in your career, you know, I think it was there were a bit more negative headlines, but now I think everyone's riding, riding your wave. Like I'm just real. You know, you may not agree with everything that I do, but it comes from a place of like just who I who I am and how I how I grew up. Did you feel like you got a bit complacent after knocking those three heavyweights? pretty early in your career. The only reason I wanted to do what I do was just to show like an average guy like me could make like a God bless. Is there a moment in your career you wish you could have back? I've had this honest conversation. I think if I had my time again, I would never pick up a tennis racket. Do you guys get enough support from, from Tennis Australia? <sighs> I mean. Another thing that you just ventured into is OnlyFans. I don't wear underwear. Hey everyone, welcome back to a massive episode here on Let's Trot. Episode 22 with Australian superstar, the unapologetic Nick Kyrgios. How are you, brother? Good, brother. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. How was your day? What have you been up to? Oh, not too bad, man. Flew up from Canberra just for you. Um, had to clear a lot of things out of my schedule, but anything for you, man. I really appreciate that. No tell worries. me, tell me. Uh, do you watch much of the NRL? Got a team? Um, look, I, you know, I grew up in Canberra, so the easy answer would be the Raiders, but um, you know, my mum and dad, they watch it religiously. You know, every time the NRL's on, I'm walking in, they're going crazy, but... I, I do keep in contact with some players, um, Jerome Luai, yep. uh, Latrell Mitchell. Yep, yep. So look, if I had to put my finger on it, I'd probably, oh, I mean, I do, I like Kalen Ponga as well, a little shout out, but I think I like the Rabbits, man. Bit of a similarity with those players with yourself, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we are, we are a bit, um, we do like to do things our own way and, and yeah, we're, we're a bit of a rock stars, if you will. We, we, we perform hard and then we, we, we party hard. I love that. I love that. And Tell me about your new show, your new podcast series, Good Trouble. Uh, love the name, uh, by the way. Appreciate that. How did you uh, land in that spot? Um, yeah, I mean, look, for me, tennis was always one medium of communication. Mm. Um, I don't think tennis really, if I say to someone I'm a tennis player, it doesn't really represent who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. um, so I always want to do something like Good Trouble to kind of show the world that I was able to connect with other athletes or, you know, other you know, people like Gordon Ramsay, like I never thought, like I'm a kid from Canberra, yeah. you know, I grew up in Canberra and the fact that I'm able to sit next to people like Mike Tyson and, and Gordon Ramsay and, and have a chat and, and get to know about their journey and mm -hmm. hopefully highlight some things to, to help others in their journeys is pretty special. So I think that's just another way that I can kind of affect the world. But yeah, man, it's exciting. A lot of work behind it, but it was worth it. I think that's what I love about you most. Like you definitely haven't forgotten where you come from. Mm. Um, and talking about all those stars on your show, is there one particular uh, celebrity that stands out for you on the show so far? Um, I'll tell you one that I'm really excited for is Charlie Sheen. Oh that one, yeah, that one's gonna be that one's gonna be good. Uh, but then they're all they're all a bit like they have so much success, and I've all asked I've asked them, mm. you know, how do they ever just sit back and enjoy things? And they're all just really obsessed with. I don't think it's necessarily winning or being successful, but they just don't stop. They're always wanting to do more, and mm. I think it's for the same reason. They, none of them grew up with anything special they all came from hard um upbringings and they just want success to take care of the people around them and i think that's something that i really resonate with mm. the, the biggest i guess flex in my life and my career is that the ability that i can look after my family and my friends and everyone that knows me and that's grown close to me knows that i try and look after them on a night out and um you know whether it's with anything their work a night out dinner and yeah, I just lo I love providing for my people. Yeah, I love that, man. A lot of lessons there. You have been dabbling a bit with the media, obviously mm. with the podcast. You were just commentating the Australian Open. Yeah. Uh, how was that shift? Obviously, I'd rather be out there on the court. Yeah. But what was that like commentating the Australian Open? Well, I mean, look, I started playing tennis when I was seven, and you know, obviously, you and the you know NRL and and playing. That's all we kind of know. It's kind of what we studied and we were obsessed with, and we learn and. People assume that we don't know much, you know, like athletes in general, we're not very intellectually switched on, but mm. that's all I've known my whole life is tennis. And I feel like commentating felt so natural. And I feel like it's people to watch, like you watch big NRL matches, like commentating can add so much. I agree. Like intensity to the match, you know, whether you're following the emotions yes. up and down. And I knew how much it was, how important it was. So I tried to give my absolute best effort to add something to the match without taking away from the talent and, and without shitting on them like people usually do, you know, when I'm playing, like, cause everyone's different. That's why we love athletes and, mm. and watching sports. So I tried to add my little twist on there. Bro, bro I, think, I thought you did an amazing <laughs> job, man. Definitely. Like, obviously it wasn't vanilla. It wasn't generic yeah. commentating. You know, I, I'm pretty sure you know that in yourself that you got a great reaction from it. Appreciate uh, it. Tell me another mm. thing that you just ventured into is OnlyFans. Yes. So obviously a bit of perception with OnlyFans, you know, I'm sure you're not taking off your shirt or, 
or your undies. But uh, <laughs> I don't wear underwear, oh, by the way. Awesome. Just don't so, spread your legs. Yeah, <laughs> uh, if wizard sleeve right here. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about OnlyFans, brother. What, what did you venture then down that path? Um, you know, I think OnlyFans originally was a platform, you know, for athletes and people to get behind the scenes kind of content of their favorite people, what they could learn yep. from people. And obviously now we don't have to go too far into what the majority of OnlyFans is, but you know, you see some UFC fighters signing with OnlyFans now and a couple more tennis athletes. And I think, you know, for instance, I'm a massive NBA fan. So if Kevin Garnett, for instance, or Paul Pierce had an OnlyFans, I'd be like, fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna subscribe to that. I'm gonna see what, I wanna see what they do in their day-to-day -day basis and what I can learn from. So I feel like OnlyFans knew that I had a big kind of following, whether, you know, they like me or they don't like me. There were a lot of people wanted to see what would happen behind the scenes. So it's cool, man. I just give them insights to what I eat, what restaurants I go to, what kind of my training involves you know sometimes a night out in the club like it's actually really i just get to basically vlog my life and post and get paid for it and you're just having fun in the process exactly yeah there's nothing from sometimes i'm given lessons on you know tennis and stuff like that so it's actually in my opinion like quite helpful to my to my kind of group but um yeah like the media in like obviously they picked up on it and it was like oh curious sign with only fans what a waste of talent and stuff but the cool thing is like Every time I make an announcement now, the media has to subscribe to my OnlyFans to figure out what I'm doing. So you have to go hunting for that exclusive. <laughs> exactly. I literally just make say, it work hey, a bit harder for my next, my, for my next, um, you know, my next moves. Subscribe to my OnlyFans. You got seven, seven news, nine news subscribing. It's the best. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Let's go back to your tennis. You're obviously rehabbing your injuries. Um, you have a bit of a knee and wrist injury. How's that coming along? Yeah, obviously brutal, man. Um, two knee, two knee surgeries and the wrist surgery set me back big time mentally. Mm. I had the best, you know, year of my career. You know, had the third best season on planet behind Alcaraz and Nadal and Djokovic. And I just, yeah, my body kind of just needed a rest. Um, and yeah, I've had some serious conversations with myself after this surgery, you know, whether I wanted to come back and actually return. Um, you know, obviously everyone thinks, oh, is Nick Kyrgios retiring? It's like, clearly they don't know what it's like to rehab from an injury. I don't want to be in that stage of my life where awesome. I'm rehabbing every day. Mm. Um, so it's been hard, man. I've had some seriously tough conversations, but I've got good people in my corner. Um, and I've just tried to take a day by day process, trying to enjoy the fact that it's part of and that being an athlete is being injured. It's part of the journey, bro. It is, and sometimes it's like it's hard. Like people don't get like they just see the tip of the iceberg. They see me out there in front of hundreds of thousands of people playing and enjoying myself and getting paid, but then they don't see the times where it's like it's hard. Like I don't know. Sometimes I don't even know what to do with myself when I'm like rehabbing every day. You know, like it can get boring, you know, especially in rehab. But I know one thing about injuries, it definitely reveals character. Big time. And I've been looking on your stories and, you know, on your social media, you've definitely been working the, the house down. Oh, I, I try to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I we'll never know. I might train with you one day. We'll see how you go. <laughs> um, everyone wants to know, everyone's like the question on everyone's lips is when can we see you back on the court? Um, I'm probably able to hit tennis balls in about one month. Okay. And then it's a whole process of, you know, getting the load up. I mean, you don't understand how it works. You can't just. Oh, it's healthy now. I'm going to go back out mm. there and, and play the finals of Wimbledon again. No, it's going to like start from ground zero, learn how to hit a forehand again yeah. with no pain and, and then go from there. So I'm just trying not to think about anything ahead. Like I take it day by day. And it's a good approach. Yeah. That, I mean, I feel like I have to in this time of my career as well. Like I've got nothing to prove to anyone else. You know, I'm, I've, I think I've had a pretty good career in my eyes. Obviously, I wake up every day and see that, you know, is Nick Kyrgios the biggest waste of talent to ever touch a tennis racket? Maybe, but... I feel like I've made a lot of people proud as well. So I'm just taking it day by day, man. I don't think everyone suggests that, like what you just said. Majority. Yeah, I don't know. Well, <laughs> well, you know, lines don't concern the opinion of a sheep, do they? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, tell me one thing as well. That's the snippet in the bud right now. You're definitely not going to retire from tennis. Um, No, I'm not going to. I think I've got, I'm definitely going to come back after this injury and play for another year. That's a definite. Yep. Um, And then after that, you know, whether, whether my body holds up after that is a whole different question. So, I mean, I'd like to, obviously I always told myself I wouldn't play after 30. Yep. yep. I always said that I'd have a good enough career to, uh, so I could just chill and, That'd be um, nice. and then I soon realized that even if I don't play tennis, I'll be doing other things. That's what I didn't really understand when I was early twenties, mm. um, which I'm excited for, you know, I'm, I'm able to, if I wasn't injured, I wasn't, I wouldn't be able to sit here and have a great conversation with you mm. or yeah. do some of these amazing other things. And I think athletes do struggle with that. They struggle with the unknown after like it's like that's my identity of what do i do now and i feel like i can give hope to some of those athletes like you're not just a footy player or a tennis player like you're much more than that it was just one way of communicating your personality so um yeah it's exciting man how does that sit with you been an inspiration to so many um it 
Honestly, it's kept me going uh, a fair bit. You know, in 2019, we didn't have to talk about too much, but went through a very difficult period of my life. You know, I was self-harming every day, um, was contemplating committing suicide, and I was in a place where I was wondering what what else, like what, what was I doing? I, I didn't really have an answer to anything. And then I realized that a lot of kids look up to me and, and then they do, they do come to me for, for, for advice, not just on tennis, but just life. You know, I'm, I'm able to affect and give people hope. Like I was an overweight kid from Canberra who was not athletically gifted at all. I was, I literally didn't come from much and now I'm able to do all these things. And I think it just gives people hope. So, um, I think the fans and, and the, and the people that continually reach out and support kept me going through that time. That was a big one. Um, and I love it now. I love that I'm able to help as much as I am. I'm sorry you had to go through that first. It's okay. I, will, I, I wouldn't regret it at all. I mean, I, I don't regret feeling that way and going through it because I've definitely grown through that period of, period of my life. I love that, brother. I love that. I appreciate you sharing that nah, personal right. story. Um, how's your shoe game going? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Jordan 1s um, are my favorite shoe. Uh, not mids, though. It has to be lows or highs. That's the only shoe I wear. Yeah, I don't rock the Jordans, unfortunately, but right. uh, drum roll. Uh, I know you love your kicks and our proud sponsors of the show, Shoe Grab, have gifted you a pair of Jordans, but if you want to dig into that and have That's a quick look. That's very, very kind. Open it up. There was no need for that, but I appreciate it. The best sneaker store in the land. All righty, let's have a Shoe look at Grab. Let's boys. check it out, brother. Oh, all right. I don't, I don't want to do, I don't, I don't want to do this action. That's might, you to a T, bro. Yeah, they might have to. Um, See, I admire those. I admire those, but I can't rock them. Yes, you can. You put a pair of jeans on with these with your legs. Fuck, they look yeah, sexy okay. as. Speaking about my legs, you know, like size 13 foot. Yeah. But not long not long at all. Nah, you look good like, in these, like, bro. Look at this. Look at this, this, this. My foot is almost the size of my shin. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Fair enough. I didn't think about it like that. I but these are, these are definitely going to get a run tonight in the club, let me tell I you. I love that. I love that. Appreciate it. Thank nah, you. Thank you. Let's talk about a bit about your childhood. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, growing up playing tennis yeah. and basketball. Mm. Um, tell me what made you want to pursue tennis rather than basketball. Uh, I, I hated it. I didn't want to pursue tennis at all. I would have given up and I would have never played again. I was playing basketball. Basketball was my first love. Had a basketball court. Um, a basketball hoop outside my, my house yeah. and I used to just play it every day. I used to just want to finish school, finish tennis, go play it, go shoot some hoops on my own. And then at 14, my dad basically came out to the, the, the cement paveway and was just like, look, we're not going to, like, we're going to just give away basketball. Like, we can't do both. We're going to pursue tennis. Because I was, I was tracking pretty well on both. You know, I was playing for, for Canberra, for basketball, and obviously I was doing a bit better tennis-wise. And then he's like, look, we're just going to pursue tennis. And I... To this day, it's probably one one decision that it was completely out of my hands. I didn't have any say about it, and I just did it, and it's probably the best decision I ever made. Obviously, definitely no regrets there. Yeah, yeah but um, yeah, it was all my parents, man. If they wasn't for them, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be here. Because I was gonna say, like the enjoyment I find you playing basketball rather than tennis, big big difference. I I, I definitely feel like basketball is your passion. You obviously enjoy watching the game. You enjoy playing it. Yeah, is that a fair observation? Hundred percent. I feel like when I play basketball, I'm just meditating. I go out and play for two hours. I don't think about anything else, just competing. Yeah, yeah. Putting the ball through the hoop and then being with my mates. And then as soon as I step off that basketball court, I'm back to the stress of Nick Kyrgios, you know. And on the court, on the tennis court, it's like, it's a disaster. I've got so many, I've got my mind's moving at a million miles an hour. And basketball was like the only release I had from everything. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, so tennis is, it's been successful, but it's caused a lot of stress at the same time. Oh. Sorry to hear about that. No. But you are a part owner of South Melbourne, Phoenix. Yes. Uh, could we see you on the court one day playing for them or what? Possibly. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon I could. Hey, um, you reckon? You nah, back nah, nah, no chance. We didn't. Um, no chance. No chance. Um, those, the league, this league is getting good. Oh, you know, we've got a lot of good imports. And it's, it's a genuine pathway to mm. the NBA, which is, which is good to see. But no, nah, look, a part owner in the Phoenix, that's about it. I'll be watching them for a while. I'm not playing for them. How did you get involved with them? So my, the majority owner, Romy, is one of my good friends. Okay. Um, and we met and yeah, he's just, we've hit it off ever since. And we just, yeah, he's helped me out. Gave me a, you know, mad opportunity with that. And, and yeah, it's been good. I was going to say as well, um, you're a proud Greek. You know, I mean, yes. I mean, what Greek isn't proud of, of proud of That's being true. Greek. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, you had a bit of a rift with Stefano Sissipas. Mm -hmm. um, he was pretty critical of you in the yep. Netflix series Breakpoint. Yes. Um, have you guys... Uh, I mended that relationship by we chance? We have. We actually have, which I never thought would be yeah. possible. You know, we definitely 
funny thing is we were actually really close when we were a bit younger and then we've you know played each other a couple times and obviously you know what it's like you get between the lines and all, and all you want to do is compete and, and win and and things got a bit chippy with us which is fun. I'm all for it like I love it but I think some people are a bit they struggle to differentiate when you're off the court what to on it you know they bring everything that was done there off the court and, and don't let go but we actually caught up for dinner in Melbourne this year oh well and uh yeah we actually put it all aside and we're, we're back on being really good terms now which is good because i like him i think he's very important to the sport he's one of our biggest names we have and obviously being greek as well so um yeah we were talking about some some scheme we were scheming and, and planning some things how exciting could we ever see you representing greece going forward um i wouldn't say it's i think it's there's a chance um obviously born and bred at aussie you know grew up here but at the same time, you know, I think if I took my talents to, to Greece and, and got into some elite playing shape with Stefanos, I think we could we could win the Davis Cup, definitely. 100%. I love that. Why yeah. not? 100%. Yeah. You've got to back yourself. 100%. Uh, you had an amazing junior career. Um, obviously, you uh, reached the number one rankings uh, in your junior career. Uh, you turned pro in 2012, 2013, is yeah, that right? 2013, yeah. What was that transition like? Honestly, man, it was the most it was a weird thing for me like I was a normal kid going to school um play video games didn't really train like I trained but I wasn't thinking that I was ever gonna be one of the best players in the world I was just in Canberra just chilling and then I won a professional tournament and then I saw the short list of people that had won a tournament at that age and it was like Federer, Murray, Rainich, Dimitrov all these legends of the game and I'm just like that's just no chance that I'm able to do that. And then things just kept progressing. And then, yeah, I just made quarterfinals at Wimbledon. I beat Nadal when he was number one in the world. And yeah, then no. my life changed forever, man. I was going to say, that was my was next an, question. Yeah, I was a normal kid. I was 17, uh, 18. And there was people camping outside my house uh, in Watson, Canberra for like two weeks straight. Couldn't, my life literally changed forever. Because I can't help but notice that you like to stay in the shadows. Like you don't really like the spotlight directly on you. Especially a small, you know, a kid coming out of small town Canberra. Yeah, is that a, is that fair to say? Yeah, I'm de I, on the court. I'm insane. Like I'm definitely crazy. I've got two different personalities. But off the court, I'm actually I'm quite introverted. I don't really like being in the spotlight. Even though the Aussie media is kind of painting me to be this kind of enigma, I guess I don't like the attention that I have always been. Can I say the perceptions changed though? Like I think early in your career, you know, I think it was there were a bit more negative headlines. But now I think everyone's running riding your wave, everyone's accepted for who you are and everyone's loving it. I yeah, think that, that's that's my view anyway. I definitely feel that. You, I, think you're, I think you're right. Like, I feel like they understand that I'm not, like, I'm just real. You know, I, you may not agree with everything that I do, but it comes from a place of, like, just who I, who I am and how I, how I grew up. You know, I grew up in a heavy Greek environment. Like, I'm competitive and I only ever wanted to win. Like, me getting angry on court was just my care factor of not performing it's a passion, well. passion, man. Exactly. So it's like, and you know, I do, I try and give back as much as I can to the community. And I feel like, yeah, I feel like the media now is, is pro, more pro Kyrgios than against it, but, um, it's taken a while, man. So pretty much a year after you beat Rafa, who was number one in the world, the year after that, you beat Roger. Yep. And then not, to, not long after that, you beat Joker yep. twice in the same year, straight sets. Yeah. For you, did you feel like you got a bit complacent after knocking those three heavyweights pretty early in your career did you, do you feel like you got a bit comfortable with yourself or um um it was a tough one it was almost like I never took myself seriously enough I think it was a part of me that I never I'm I may come across as super confident but I'm not I think I never really believed in myself that I could win a grand slam or I could achieve things that other people had achieved so I think when I I mean beating Rafa Roger and Novak on my first try it gave me confidence that I didn't have as a person when I was on the court, but I didn't, I don't think I got complacent. I think I just struggled with like- Accepting it? Accepting it, but I don't think I was, I don't think I was ready to fill the shoes that people had, you know, had, had like, I wasn't ready to, to, to fill those shoes. I just wasn't, I wasn't ready for the media. I wasn't ready for the spotlight. I wasn't ready for the fame. Like my, my family, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. So as soon as I started making a lot of money, we didn't know how to deal with things. We just, it was, it was, it was bizarre. We had no one talking about us and the whole, whole world was talking about us for, and we all struggled with it. So it took a toll on me mentally and I wasn't able to perform 
amazing at times in my career. But I, I mean, look, I was doing the best I could at that time. I had a lot of shit going on off the court as well as on the court. And I thought now going through it, I think I navigated it pretty well, to be honest. The fact that I was still able to go through all those things and and play was 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 pretty good. Um, but I never was complacent. I think I just wasn't ready mentally to take on that the mantle of, you know, what, what everyone wanted. Because it wasn't just Australia, it was global. Like yeah. what you did was nothing short of extraordinary. Like knocking off those three players who are arguably the three best players the past two decades. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was that what was any of those three someone that you looked up to as well? Um, not at all, bro. I, all my idols were basketball players. All my idols. I mean, I had I like Joe Wilfred Songer. He was a tennis player that I kind of resonated with a little bit, but the only reason I wanted to do what I do was just to show like an average guy like me could make like a God bleed. Literally, like when you look at Federer, Novak and Rafa, like you look at those athletes as some of the greatest people to ever touch a sport, like yeah. play a sport. Yeah. And if someone like Nick Kyrgios can go out there and, and they for two hours come to the net and say too good, like too good Nick Kyrgios, you beat us. Like, I think it's a joke. I think it's all a joke. I think every, anything's possible if you really just like put your mind to it. But like... Yeah, it's just like, how can someone like me go through all that type of stuff, recover from it, and then still have success against these guys mm. who are not real to people? Yeah, well, <laughs> you've done pretty well to handle it, if I'm going to be totally honest with you. Well, the next question I wanted to ask you was, is there a moment in your career you wish you could have back? Um, This is a tough question because I don't regret anything. Because yeah. I think if you take away one sort of experience or thing, the whole, the whole structure falls down. So I, I don't regret, but... I've had this honest conversation. I think if I had my time again, I would never pick up a tennis racket. I think I would not play tennis if I had my time again. Far out. So, where would you rather your path to go down? Um, so if it wasn't for tennis? I would probably play basketball, but yeah, just, yeah. Like I always told, I tell my partner now, like if we have a son, he's not playing tennis. Yeah, got you. I just don't want someone to go through what I went through. Say the path you, you chose was basketball and it didn't end up working out. Would you be content with that, with the life that you would have had to, to have? Yeah, I think. Rather than what you have now? Um, that's a tough question because I, I fully understand that what I have now is a lot of people aspire to be, in the, you know, to be where I have, you know, worked my entire life to be, but like I still have friends to this day or like people, they think it's like, it's very simple. They think I, you, I wake up, I play a bit of tennis, I make money, I travel the world. They don't really understand anything that goes yeah. into it. Like, and most of these people don't even make their bet. Like they you're don't- You're almost sacrificing your life, like taking up a professional career. Yeah, you're, you got no privacy, you know, yeah. you're under the spotlight 24 seven. You can't literally have any misdemeanors. So I get, I get that part, but people also say then, it's a, it's a pretty good privilege that it is definitely and i think it's a hard one because i i love what i'm able to get out of my career and i love what i've been able to build for, for others but at the same time like oof, to have a bit of to have an inch of privacy w would be nice i agree with you on that one <laughs> not that i'm any close to you to, to your status but um yeah you've said it before like commentators fans you know uh, counterparts have been pretty critical of your game but let's be honest, telling Piers Morgan to eat a dick was one of the most satisfying moments in your career. Yeah, 100%. And that was <laughs> honestly, and, and then the, the fact that I, you know, I, I actually jumped on um, Piers Morgan's show and we actually went head to head against I each saw. other. How did, that, how did that come about? I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> and then, like, he actually he started with that. He was like, he actually he read what he said to me and I just said, yeah, eat a dick. <laughs> oh, no. You looked straight down the barrel, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I said, eat a dick. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I was like, oh. Well, I lost to Andy Murray's center court Wimbledon and I got I got smoked. Like, I wasn't feeling good. And I, was, I remember I was walking to Chipotle in America, this Mexican joint. I was having like five Coronas. And I just look open my Twitter and I'm just like, uh, Piers Morgan, oh, curious, pack your toys and, and get out of London. I'm like, bro, eat a dick. Like, I was just like, I'm not, I, I got a guy here that doesn't look like he's ever ran in his life telling me to do that. Like, I'm just like, bro, I'm not even hearing it. And that's when we, when we actually went one-on-one -on -one against each other at the start of the interview, he was like, look, I couldn't stand you. And then by the end of it, he was like, you and I are very alike. I'm like, yeah, cause you, you see what the media put out for 30 seconds of a tennis match, a four hour tennis match that you see 30 seconds of it. You never had a conversation with me. It's like, you're just completely judging someone on, 
It's fucking crazy, it's, man. it's like with all athletes, right? So as soon as you meet someone that you can't stand you yep. know, by just watching them play and do their thing. Have that snippet. Have that, have that one moment with them one-on-one. Yep. Yeah, instantly change. Yep. Like I know you love your NBA. Like Kobe yep. Bryant was a perfect example, right? Yep. Everyone hated Kobe Bryant yep. the way he played. Like yep. he played with so much passion, aggression, maybe yep. a bit of arrogance. Yeah, as soon as have, yeah. you have to though. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, non uh, people that don't play sport, they don't understand it. They have no idea about it. And I think, bro, for me, the the, the Australian media painted me to be such a thing that I wasn't. It was a really it was a struggle for me because even when I met my partner that I have now, like she already had a preconceived idea 100%. of how I was. It was like, and she said that she says, I thought he was going to be volatile. I thought he was going to be arrogant. I thought he was going to be like, like being a volatile as a partner, like already having that preconceived idea, like I'm behind the eight ball. I'm just going to be like, oh, sh what do I have to do to, to, and then I just said, I, I just need her to hang out with me one time. And she's like, wait, you're like so different to how, and I'm like, yeah, that's, what I've been dealing with for the last 12 years of my life. Every time someone meets me, they just think I'm a nut, nut, a nutcase. Mm. It could be exhausting. It is, and it's, it, bro, it's cost, now it's it's okay because it's kind of grown legs and it's been successful, but it cost me millions of dollars like with sponsors because they thought I was a certain way when I wasn't. Well, you've traveled pretty much across the whole globe. Yep. Uh, is there one tournament that stands out um, for you that you love playing in? I think, yeah, I mean, look, Wimbledon for me is the biggest tournament there is. And I think people, tennis, non-tennis fans even know what Wimbledon is. You know, like people that don't even care about tennis. Like if you've won Wimbledon, you become tennis immortality. And that was, that was my thought process about it. You know, I don't fit in at Wimbledon at all. It's like, I'm like a snowman in the desert there. So it's like- You know you it, remind me of, a bit of NBA, a bit of Allen Iverson. Like yeah, AI. Yeah, I don't know. I that's, think that, that's definitely a compliment. I'll take that every day. Yeah, you're shaking up the game, you know, like unapologetic. You take the court, you know, you're, you're you. And like you said, you've got no regrets. Yeah, I mean, AI, look, uh, he's one of my, I would say one of my idols. So, um, but yeah, Wimbledon, man, like I was, yeah, if you win Wimbledon, you're, no one can say shit. I was so close. Novak Djokovic, that robot, man. He's too good. Speaking, I, wanted, I wanted to speak late in the show about Novak, but uh, there was a bit of a feud between you two mm -hmm. uh, for quite a long time, yep. I, I have to say. How the hell did you actually make up and mm. now become good friends? Like, what the, How um, did that end up happening? Well, a stubborn Serb with a stubborn Greek yeah. working. <laughs> well, we were actually we were good friends again, and then we, had, we played each other a couple of times, and I just wasn't supportive of some of the things he went on and did on the court sometimes. So I was very vocal about it, as you know, like very un unapologetic. And then obviously that stuff with COVID happened. And then he was in our country and we deported him like he was some like crazy person. I'm just like, and then I just stood up for him. I was like, look, this guy is one of the greatest athletes to ever live. He wants to come to Australia, Melbourne to put on a show for us as fans. And we put him in a refugee hotel and kicked him out of our country i'm like i don't care who who it was i would have spoken out on anyone like with that treatment so i was like we can't treat someone like that and he even he's you know since that moment he was like you were the last person i expected to come out and and back me up and i think in a moment like that when real shit's happening so i don't even know if i'm allowed to swear but no you're um with real stuff happening like i went and he goes look like you were there for me when i was during a genuine life crisis like I was struggling with my mental health and you you know you were the only colleague that stood up for me so then ever since then it's basically been you know mutual respect and then we've got to know each other a bit more and we became friends and then obviously the Wimbledon final happened it was like a fairy tale and now we speak all the time I think Serbia is going to name a straight after me and as well so I'm going to go there cut the <laughs> rope yeah. you're kidding I promise <laughs> you so it's gonna be crazy I'm going to go there I want to party with all the city of Serbia and just go crazy man what makes Novak so great in my opinion he doesn't do like he doesn't do anything um, super amazing. Like obviously he does like great backhand, great athlete, yeah. but it's more so just the composure and the consistency. Like I feel like, we use this example, like Conor McGregor said to Floyd Mayweather, like he wasn't his speed or his power, it was just his composure in certain moments. And that's exactly how I felt when I played Novak. It's like, doesn't serve unbelievable, doesn't like do anything unreal, but he's just so composed and plays the biggest points with poise and under pressure is just so clutch. And I think that's just all it is. Consistency, brother. Just consistency. Consistent. Yeah, I felt like when I played him, I was like, fuck, this is like 30 years of just diligent, consistent work that I'm going up against. Mm, I love that. That's what I felt against him. I love that. I love that. Tell me about that uh, altercation with uh, Ben Stiller. Oh, yeah. But what, so I, when I first saw it, I thought you were talking to him. But no. Yeah, okay. So well, one of his teammates was like, or one of his like team members around the area kept telling me where to serve, 
how to play. Oh, and I'm, I would have burned me. And like, I'm playing Rafa Nadal in one of the biggest tournaments in the world, like quarterfinals. And I just turn back, I'm like, bro, like, do you play tennis? Like, are you good at tennis? <laughs> I lost it. And that. then he's just like, no. Nah. And I'm like, so why, like, why are you telling me how to play right now? Because it was like so loud, front row, like constant. And then like, I looked at Ben, it just, all these things just come into my head at the same And then I'm just like, do I tell him how to act? Like, I'm not going to go on set and start directing Ben Stiller on how to act. Like, it's just not happening. And then you were spraying him while you were about to. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I just like, do I tell him how to act? And then like, and then Stiller was just like, what the hell's going? I mean, dragged into this. And it was pretty, it was pretty funny. Oh, I love that. Do you guys get enough support from from Tennis Australia? <sighs> well, I mean, Tennis Australia hasn't supported me for a while, but um, I mean, look, I think the media. How had is their, that possible? Uh, I, I don't know. Like you're one of the shining lights in Australian tennis, and you what? You got no, you get no support. How does that make sense? Um, well, I was in the academy earlier in my career and I kind of decided to do my own thing. And that was a very good decision for me. I think just personalities, you know, I think you look at someone like Alex Demonar or Jordan Top, like these guys have success, but they have success their own way. Like we're, we're all different people. Like we can't all go through the same cookie cutter process to, to have success. And I think that was the biggest thing about Tennis Australia or like tennis in Australia in general. They all thought that we all had to be like Leighton Hewitt. It's like, he was a champion, no doubt. Like one of the greatest Australian icons we've ever had. But I'm not like Leighton. Like I can't. Chalk and cheese. I can't train like him. I can't be like him. So that's not my mold of tennis player that I want to be like. So anyone that wasn't seen to be like Leighton was known as to be an outcast or disrespectful or this or that. And I think Bernard, myself, we kind of fell into a category of being different. And most of Australia didn't embrace that. It was like frowned upon where now I, I think they like personalities. Like you look Vulcan at me. Like I love Volkanovski. Mm, like he's a man. He, I, I love Volk, and it's like uh, me and Volk are so similar. We did a lot of stuff together, and I, I love it. We got along like like anything, and it's like I feel like I have so many similarities. And now Australia loves, you know, when I go out there and put on a show and stuff. But like maybe five, ten years ago, we weren't as embraced. When we needed, that's when we needed the support. That's when Bernard needed the support. That's when I needed the support most because then we started to feel so shit about ourselves. We started believing the things that all these people were saying. It wasn't easy, like. You know I mean? That's one thing I hope changes. Like, you know, talk, that tall poppy syndrome, man. Fuck it. It's, it's hard. It's, it's running rampant within, yeah. within culture here in Australia. Yeah. And it's brutal, man. I feel like anyone that's vocal, anyone that wants to be themselves is like, no, no, no. You got to get back in line. You got you to act like this person. You know what I mean? And I was I like, agree. I don't know. For me personally, I hope it changes. I feel like it is changing, just like you said. But it is. But it's going to take some time. But like, I definitely could have used a bit more support when I was going through it because it was like, I was just a kid and I was seeing like an ocean of media, of negative media of saying I was this, I was that, I was going bad. And I was like, I haven't changed since I was like 10. Like I was just an emotional kid. Like I was crying on court when I was 10 years old. I was just super emotional and super passionate about anything. I'm just, I'm either all in or I'm all out. Like even on a night out, my boys know like it's either we're like, we're dipping the beak and we're going hard or we're just like not doing anything. I'm pretty much the same with <laughs> you on that one. <laughs> that's just that's just how I am. I'm like all or nothing, you I'm, know. I'm exact same, brother. So, I'm exact same. Um, listen, I've thrown some heavy questions at you. Let's have a bit of fun now, eh? Okay. Okay. So I want to pretty much create a prototype ultimate tennis player. Yep. Okay. This is a good one. So like uh, our serve. Who's gonna um, serve? I'll take myself. Since I got to throw myself in at, at, on on one of these, I'll do. I think I do have pound for pound the best serve. It's hard. It's hard to argue with I'm that one. I'm not super tall for a tennis player these that this this day and age. I'm not super. You're tall. not super tall. No, it's, I'm like I'm probably above above average, but I'm not super tall. Like there are some Medvedev six six. Is he? Yeah, there's like there's some big like Zverev six like, six six. Like there's some big boys out there. Far out. Yeah. Um, but pound for pound, I think I'll take my serve. Mm -hmm. um, I think variation, second serve. Yeah, first serve rhythm. Yep. Love that. What about our backhand? So is it? Past players or is it just all time? Uh, anyone. All time. Is it Kyrgios serve forehand? Mm. This one's. Oh, I'm gonna leave forehand for now. Backhand. I'll take Novak. Okay. Hands down, the best backhand to ever, ever, ever play the game. Redirecting backhand line, backhand cross court movement can turn defense into offense with one shot. So rock solid, easy, not even a question. Mm -hmm. uh, slice Federer. 100%, like best slice to ever, Federer slice. Speed? Uh, speed, I'll take, nah, speed, I'll, pure speed, I'll take Demonar, Alex Demonar. Yeah, wow. 
arguably probably one of the most rapid guys I've ever seen on a tennis really? court. Change of direction, court coverage. Mm -hmm. Alex Demina, speed. IQ? IQ. I got one for forehand. I'm taking the Rafa forehand. I'm taking the dull forehand. I think he's got the most dangerous forehand to ever play. I think if you don't hit a ball to his backhand side with some interest, he's running around it in that forehand. I saw one cracker forehand from you. I can't, I can't remember the exact the opponent you um you're facing, but he hit it so good. But you just went bang. Yeah, my my forehand from time to time gets a bit gets a bit naughty, but <laughs> now nah, Rafa forehand. Djokovic backhand, Federer slice, IQ. This is a hard one because, I mean, I haven't had a coach for six years. So, I, I mean, look, I don't know if in the history of tennis has anyone made the finals of Wimbledon without a coach. So, IQ, I'll probably take myself. Yep. Fitness, last one. Fitness. Fitness it's hard to go past Rafa. I was going to say, he runs for days. Rafa's an animal, man. Rafa is pro Rafa or Leighton Hewitt, fitness-wise, they're probably two of the greatest competitors I've ever come across. Nice. Yeah. That's a pretty handy tennis player. Fuck, I wouldn't yeah, want to yeah. face that bloke. Dollars. All right, now let's just dive in. What's in the sauce, brother? What's in the sauce? What's in the sauce? All right, better true or false? I like this. This, this <laughs> shit, I'll, I'll, I'll thrive in this <laughs> shit. Did you say it, by the way? Did you say no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. If you had your chance again in the Wimbledon final against Novak, you'd win true or false? False. Not, not true at all. I think... I'm surprised by that answer to be going on. Well, it's hard. Do I just go back to that moment without everything I've learned from then? Or is it like, do I, do I, feel, do I learn from it? And then like, so I've gone through all this and I go back now. Correct. Okay. And then maybe, maybe true. I'd say true because I would sleep a bit better. Because I didn't sleep for like a day and a half leading up to the final. Sorry? What? I was just so anxious. I felt like every little thing that I did in my life, every good meal, every rehab session, every gym session, every good decision I made was for that moment in time. And I just couldn't. I had so much anxiety about how I was going to perform, what I was going to do. So I say true. Are you naturally an anxious person? Hell yeah. yeah. What brings it on, you reckon? Just like the like big moments or like... Um, I, 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 th I like big moments. It's just I don't... Mm, I just... I see everything on in the crowd, man. Like I just, I look around, everyone's staring at me like. Oh dear. Yeah, big, I don't know, man. I, I feel like it's cause, I don't know. I've been wearing a black hat for a while. People like to see me as a villain. It's like, I don't know, man. Sometimes I deal with it well, but sometimes my thoughts get the best of me. But true, I'll say, I'll say I'll win the final if I play him again. Sounds good. True or false, you're winning a Grand Slam within the next 18 months. 18 months, year and a half. I'll say I'll say false. I'll probably need a little bit more time than that because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get back to full strength. So I'll say I'll say false purely based on time frame. Can I say I believe in you? I believe you can win a Grand Slam in eighteen months. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. If, uh, I mean, look, if you're going to manifest it, put it out. Put there, it brother. out there, brother. Put it in the universe. Thank you. Uh, true or false? This is a this is an interesting one actually. Um, your mother is Malaysian, correct? Yes. And she was born into Malaysian royalty. She's actually a princess. True or false? That's true. I wish I saw some of that money, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice. That would have been mad. <laughs> that would have been nice to, but uh, yeah, she actually she was born into royal blood in Malaysia. Um, I'm actually going there in a, in about a month's time, 15, 15th of April, going to Malaysia to see some of my family over there. But yeah, like crazy story, man. Crazy. There's um, how many royal fa uh, royal families in there in Malaysia? Like nine or ten, eleven? Yeah, like yeah, that? wild stuff. Wild. Yeah. Do you know the, the back end? Story? I don't even know the backstory to be honest that much. You know, I met. I literally have haven't met i only know my cousins from malaysia but her side of the family i haven't really met that much it's crazy maybe reconnect brother yes, never sir. know where that can take you uh this is a this is a personal favorite true or false michael jordan is the goat of basketball false. oh here we go not another one not another one oh, you def you're definitely showing your age there uh, uh, <laughs> you're definitely showing your age I'm only there. Four, what five years older than you yeah you're definitely showing your age there. all right why tell me why um who is the goat i should say who the is goat's lebron james it's just like the GOAT is Novak Djokovic, but yeah, but there's no LeBron James without Michael Jordan. Like I'm not saying like the prettiest to watch is probably Michael Jordan. Like would I rather watch Michael Jordan, LeBron? Probably, but oh, yeah. how can you, like what, what did he do better? Like you got to say that majority of players that play now, are better athletes, better quality, like as, as any sport is, like I'm not going to sit here in 20 years time and say like, oh, I could still mix it up with these youngsters. Like I couldn't do that. Like, it's just like, 
LeBron statistically is the greatest player to ever touch the ball, and that's just the way it is. And he's not even slowing down. Yeah, I know. Like, there's long people, and then people say, "Oh, longevity." It's like people just say longevity as if they know what that is. Like, bro, the diligence that LeBron James is 40 years old and still one of the best players in the NBA is ludicrous. Yes, I agree. Like, I, I, I agree with you on that. But I'm just saying, like, Federer is f prettier to watch than Novak on the tennis court, but Novak's just better. Like, Novak wins more. He like statistically is a better player. But like Federer is better to watch. It's ha it's hard with the goat debate. Like you can't expect a player like currently now in our era to be better. So than if your life was on the line, you'd take Jordan over LeBron for one game. Oh, if my life was on the line, like, like you, everything you, are you like, are you the interviewer now? <laughs> the, 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 like the face of humanity is on the line, and you had to build a team with one Brother, of those two people. I am taking Jordan all day. Every That's day. wild. That's actually wild. Really? That's wild. Next question. Okay. <laughs> let's move on. Let's, let's agree to disagree. Uh, true or false? I'll be able to return one of your souls. False. That's absurd. Whoever wrote that needs to be false. All right. You know what? Let's let's put your money where your brother. mouth is, brother. Brother. Uh, hey. I'm serving. Bro. Okay. okay. Let me put it this Can way. Can I ask? Well, how fast is your fast? My fast is like 236 kilometers. <laughs> okay. So, wait. Can I put it this way? So, I played Rafa one year, right? And I hit like 39 aces past him. So he didn't return my serve 39 times. That's the Rafa and Nadal. What makes you think? Why are NRL players like this, bro? I, you know what it Ponga, is? Uh, so <laughs> I, had this, I had this conversation with Kalen Ponga, right? He goes, so the, 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 the person we're working with goes, so who would translate to the other sport easier? I'm like, look, I'm not saying I could run in the front lines with like Petro Sivanasiva, but like I could, I can, I can, I can pass, I can run, I can like play I played touch, like I played decent. I'm not like uncoordinated, but if you put a tennis racket in Kalen Ponga's hands, no. the guy's got no hope. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to disagree All right, let's do As soon as I'm healthy, we're getting you on court. We're doing content. Hey, this... you know, 100%. You, know, right, no. you come into my world, we'll get your right. foot in your hands. No, 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 I, no but I'm, not, I'm not saying I could wrap you up from your legs. I'm not saying, I'm not, I didn't say that. I'm just saying, like, there's zero chance I you're returning really, one of my serves. I really try to picture that moment. Like, you know, the satisfying feeling when I hit that serve back over that net. Oh, look at these forearms, brother. Look at this, look at this, look at this forearm. Bro, it's about reaction time. Yeah, I know. You're not your forearms. I'm a winger, brother. Of... I'm a winger. I was right. made for reactions. All right, all right. We're doing it then. You know what? You know what? You funny pick end. a date, you pick a location, right. I will be there. Done. Um, fuck, that's funny. Uh, so our last guest was Brian Thor, ex-teammate of mine, uh, three-time premiership winner at the Panthers, yep. uh, one of the best wingers to play the NRL. Uh, he wrote you a specific question. For you only. And All righty. You've got the honest to open it up, brother. Let's do it. I have no idea what he wrote. And can I say, it could be absolutely That's anything. Fine. I'm actually scared to- So he didn't know no, that it was me. No, he didn't know it was you. That's interesting. Man, uh, we've had some absolute- I like powers. this. This is a very good- um. This is crazy. Really? Yep. What's your favorite sex position? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's continues to say, brother, ew. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I hate you, Bizarre. I hate you so much, bro. I mean, look, I'm very willing to. Get, listen, we've got. We, I can't answer it. But we've got to. Listen, under 18s, switch off right now. Um, but for our over 18s, you're, you're free to share this, uh, share this answer. So, what's your favorite sex position? Brother E. Brother E. <laughs> All right. Um, Look, I'm a very adaptable person. I play tennis, so we play in different countries, different time zones, different diet, sometimes at night, sometimes early in the morning. So I couldn't put my finger on one. I'm a very versatile person. That's a very calculated response. Uh, you know what? Very calculated uh, very, response. Very calculated, yeah. You and know that's what? it. You kept like, the PG not, rated. That you is. Have. I have. I'm, like, I, I adapt to, you know. I'm Not actually crying. Rain. I'm actually crying. Um, brother, Bizza, thank you. Uh, and thanks for answering that so honestly and openly. Right. No worries. Uh, but now you've got the privilege to uh, ask a question to our next guest. So, okay. Do I have hey. to tell you what it is? Or no, you don't, uh, don't tell me what it is. That's that's the beauty of it. Oh, awesome. The reaction you just got was just perfect. So pick up okay. that envelope, pick up that texter, and uh, right Alrighty. away. Right away. I'm going to do it. Listen, I've got major anxiety of what you wrote. I don't, don't know why. Just embrace it. Embrace everything. This is a good piece of work. I can't wait for the person that answers this question. God help the person that has to answer it. It's like I have to answer. I've got anxiety for Bro, them. it's so good. I cannot wait. When when are you doing your next step? Uh, it'd be next week. All right, bro. bro honestly. A week after, sorry. Next this, week? Next week, yeah. The answer to this, you'll know if they're your true, if, if it's a true friend or not. 
Ooh. That's how you know. Cause I and before I leave, I would. That's just 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 remember what I said. I would. Okay. I would. Okay. Oh, I sort of, I just want to rip into it right now. I appreciate that. Uh, we actually oh. got there in the end, which is awesome. Tell I'll me write your goal. My name on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, brother. Tell me. I'm sure you got big goals for 2024. What, what are they? Um, goals. Obviously, get healthy is a big one. Yes. Like, I do want to get healthy because I've probably been playing in pain now. Like, and look, as athletes, we're never 100%. So, but I do want to get at least 70% healthy so I can take the court again and and get out there and, and do what I do best. But man, I'm I've I'm not a huge goal setter. I think I just try and wake up every day, try and be a bit better. Um, and yeah, just continue to be productive, bro. Be productive. Well, complete opposites on that part. I, I have to, yeah. I have to write down goals. I have to like make sure I'm eating right food, getting enough yep. sleep. I think early in my career, like after my debut season, I kind of got a bit carried away if I'm going to be totally honest, especially like, so 2012, I debuted 2013, like, and I was going out to the Sheaf on Wednesdays. That's was, the best, dude. Uh, that, the Wednesday nights are the best. Uh, night. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Ask Maddie. Look, <laughs> Looking back at that, it probably wasn't the right uh, right thing to do for me. Yeah, anyway. I mean, yeah, I know. But it's some, learning. Some, yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I, I, when do you reckon roughly you can get back on that court? Um, yeah, I'll be back in about a month, and then I'll just build up from there. Yeah. But look, man, just ride the wave, baby. Waking up every morning is a bonus, and just trying to be better, man. Got anything coming up you can share with our viewers? I mean, obviously, you know, good troubles. You know, episodes are popping out every couple of weeks. You know, I've got the whole first season done. All the episodes are ready to go. But yeah, man, just make sure you sub to the OF. It's a really behind the scenes stuff that you need to be seeing. And that's it, man. Don't we get the camera like that ever again. <laughs> I love that, brother. Hey, honestly, thanks so much for coming to the show. Of I know course, you're brother. a busy man. Uh, I'm looking forward to hitting the town once or twice with you. Got to get permission from the missus. 100%. Though. I already got the permission slip slide. So, you know, <laughs> you know what? I think tonight's a good time. Let's All right, go. let's do it. <laughs> I'm down. Thanks again, guys. No worry, bro.